Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to yet another episode on Little's Law YouTube channel. So in this video, we are going to see about response time graph. So what is a response time graph and why is it used? So response time is again similar to the aggregate graph, but the response time graph does not contain or does not have any of the these metrics something like the samples or the average or the median the 95 90 99 percentile or the minimum response time or the maximum response time the errors so what does the response time graph have or it consists of and why do we need to use response time graph when we already have aggregate graph so this response time graph is a graphical representation again of the response times of a load test over time so if this displays the response time of the individual request or group of request in the form of a graph with the x-axis representing the elapsed time of the test so here we can see the elapsed time of the test and on the y-axis which represents the response time in milliseconds so this is what it contains of so just two metrics so in the x-axis it contains the elapsed time of the test and in the y-axis it contains the response times in milliseconds and to create a response time graph so we'll have to right click on the thread group go to add listeners and choose the response time graph so once we add the this response time graph to the thread group this listener will start collecting the data from all the samplers in our test and generate a graph that shows the response time of each and every request so now what we will do is we will run another test and we will see how does the data is getting collected and before that this is me Vasan Shanmugam I welcome you all to Little Sly YouTube channel please do subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet so let's now see the response time graph and how does it work and the difference between aggregate graph and response time graph so before that let's start executing the test and we will go to the display graph and before that let's see some of the graph settings so here we have an interval of 100 milliseconds to collect the data or even we can increase it to any number of data but it's quite simple or quite easy to at least have a 500 milliseconds to collect the data and then in case if you want to add any graph title so we can add the graph title as response time graph little sla and then we can change the font type again this is something which we have seen with other graphs so even for the line settings we can even change and even we can have the line settings here and again the graph size so this is one thing which we have already discussed in the aggregate graph so let's now click on the display graph and see how does it work so here we can see that the response times are getting displayed here with the graphs which means the response times are in the y-axis here and the lapsed time is displayed here and here we can see the heading which we have saved here so here we have the x-axis with the time format so here we can add or increase the time say for example if i have just the hour and the minute when i click on the display graph here again we can see the hour and the minute of the test and in case if we want to add we can add it so same way we can we could see the y-axis where we can scale the minimum value and we can even have the maximum value here so let me just change so here i have set the y value as 100 and that's the reason here it has been displayed as 100 and then in case if i want to change it to 200 even i can make it so here we can see the value is changed to 200 so in case if we set this value as the sla even we can use it to display it so in case the increment scale we can just have it as 50 so this will even change it so we can see the difference which is like for every 50 milliseconds we could see the graph and in case if you want to increase it by 10 by 10 so here we can see the graph so this is everything for total of the 
appearance of how does or how to display the graph and then we have the legend so we have four options here which is similar exactly similar to the aggregate graph so we have again the same legends part here so everything displaying or like whatever the settings is again similar to what we have in the aggregate graph but the only difference between the aggregate graph and the response time graph is is in the aggregate graph we can see the response times or any metric that we select here is displayed as a bar chart so everything comes in a bar format but in the response time graph it comes in a line chart so that is the difference the, ba the basic difference and again when it comes to metrics so here we can have any number of metrics something like the average or the median or the 90, 90th percentile the 95th percentile the 99th percentile the minimum and the maximum but in the response time graph we can see only the average response time of the load test so by the time so here so the, the main thing is so once the user load starts to increase we can easily identify that how does the response times the average response times gets increased or how does it the how, how does the application behaves with the increase or the decrease of the user load so before i complete the video i will just take you through the differences between the aggregate graph and the response time graph so that we can better understand that at what situation or at what circumstance we have to use which graphs so in apache jmeter this aggregate graph which we have is a graphical representation of statistical data that collects during the load test while a response time graph is again a so it's similar it's the graphical representation of the response time of a load test over time so again I'm just mentioning it here so the first one the aggregate graph is collecting or collecting all the statistical data but the response time graph is just collecting the response time so again these both types of graphs are useful for understanding the performance of an application under load but they display different types of data and can be used to answer different types of questions. So when, talk, when taking to the next step, so this aggregate graph which we have here displays the summary of the performance of the test showing the average, median, minimum and maximum values of a particular metric. For example, the response times and the throughput over the course of the test and it is useful for understanding the overall performance of the test and identifying patterns or trends in the data. But on the other hand, the response time graph displays the response time of individual requests or groups over time and it is useful for understanding how the response time of the application changes as the test progresses and can help you identify specific points in time when the response time was particularly high or low so overall in general the aggregate graph is useful for understanding the overall performance of the test and identifying patterns or trends in the data while the response time graph is useful for understanding how the response time of the application changes over the course of the test so overall the both types of the graphs can be useful for understanding the performance of an application under load and identifying problems or bottlenecks in the test but again we have the option of saving the record in a particular file location where we can choose the errors or success and we can even do the configuration where it is similar to what we have in the aggregate graph where we can choose the different level of data during the load test so overall these graphs which we have here have different requirements so we have to use them effectively so that we can understand the performance of the application under load and we can identify the problems or the bottlenecks in the load test so with that i come to an end i believe this video would have been very useful to you so until we meet you in another interesting video it's bye, -bye from ascension mugam and little slaw